We've still got the big match between Man United and Leeds to go in double game week 22, but a current score of 68 points minus 8 has seen a small drop from 150k to 160k. For a third successive match, Kepa Ariza Balaga came up with the goods, making four saves to deny Fulham and claim maximum bonus points. Luke Shaw set up Marcus Rashford to round off a well-crafted team goal, before a Casemiro red card allowed Crystal Palace back into the game. Bruno Fernandes opened the scoring from the penalty spot and crafted a match-leading four attempted assists. Only Wilfred Nonto can better that tally during the game week so far. The decision to move early on Riyad Mahrez didn't quite pay off, but the Algerian came closest to scoring for Man City when his volley cannoned back off the crossbar just before half-time. Harry Kane broke Jimmy Greaves' record to become Tottenham's all-time leading scorer as they saw out a 1-0 win over Pep Guardiola's side. He took a match-leading tally of five shots and had both of the game's two opta-defined big chances. We got news earlier today of a double game week 25 to come for Liverpool, Wolves, Arsenal and Everton. So I will be touching on some early transfer plans for that round as well as the more pressing double game week 23 that begins on Saturday. The team is in much better shape after the 8 point hit last week, with 5 double game week 23 players already in place. My plan remains to bring back Kevin De Bruyne despite question marks surrounding his starting place and Man City's form. There has been a pattern to the Belgians' recent bench appearances, both of them coming against Tottenham with Julian Alvarez preferred against their 3 at the back formation. The same happened against Nottingham Forest in game week 5, back when Steve Cooper was using a 5-3-2 system. The fact neither Arsenal nor Aston Villa play with a 3 in defence boosts De Bruyne's chances of starting in double game week 23. Since the game week 17 restart, his team leading tally of 19 attempted assists only trails Bruno Fernandes with 21 and Kieran Trippier with 28. It's with a heavy heart that Fernandes is set to make way in spite of recent form. I'm mainly basing this decision on the ceiling that De Bruyne offers, given that I expect him to start both matches, and the fact United have a blank game week 25 to come. I also expect their midfield to be significantly weaker without either of Casemiro or Eriksen. And with today's double game week 25 news, I'll be heavily considering moving De Bruyne onto Salah for that round. There's not quite enough funds to make that switch in one move, but I can use this as an opportunity to replace Matt Doherty, who left the league in January in favour of a cheap defender with a double game week 25 to come. My decision has come down to either James Tarkovsky or Max Kilman, neither of which are particularly inspiring. I slightly prefer Everton's double game week 25 fixtures due to the home tie with Aston Villa, and they're also guaranteed to play in blank game week 28, albeit against Chelsea. The Toffees showed significant improvement in their first match under Sean Dyche, restricting Arsenal to just 0.72 expected goals and zero big chances. I still have Nathan Patterson in my squad, who I'm hopeful has a chance of returning for Game Week 25 as well. I won't be making moves until later in the week as usual, which will give me chance to further assess Bruno Fernandes midweek, in case he forces me to change my mind. But the plan is Fernandes and Doherty to De Bruyne and Tarkovsky for a 4 point hit, and here's how the team is set to line up. Keeping 3 clean sheets in their last 4 matches, Chelsea have conceded just 3 big chances, the joint fewest total along with Newcastle and Leeds. Opponents West Ham have mustered up just 3 goals across their last 4 home matches, with only Southampton, Leicester and Crystal Palace scoring fewer. A double game at 23 sees Arsenal welcome Brentford and Man City to the Emirates, where they remain undefeated this season. Across each team's respective last four home matches, no side have conceded fewer than their three big chances. Brentford and Man City rank joint 6th and joint 8th respectively for goals scored in the last four away matches. Martin Odegaard was left struggling after a knock in the first half against Everton and was taken off after 76 minutes, so it may be worth waiting for an update on him before making transfers. The Norwegian has fired a team leading total of 14 shots in home matches since the game week 17 restart. Amassing 3 goals and 4 assists in 7 appearances post World Cup, Riyad Mahrez has averaged 7.8 points per 90 minutes. Only Bruno Fernandes and Erling Haaland can better his 4.7 expected goal involvement figure in that time. Aston Villa have conceded 12 big chances in their last 4 matches, with only Liverpool allowing more. 
Arsenal have fashioned only five big chances in the last four game weeks, but all of them have fallen to one man, Eddie Nketiah. In fact, only Marcus Rashford and Erling Haaland have been afforded more big chances in that time. And only Harry Kane has attempted more than his 15 shots from inside the box. But Brentford have been impressive of late, keeping three clean sheets in their last four matches. They've allowed five big chances in that time, with only Leeds, Newcastle and Chelsea conceding fewer. Erling Haaland was kept quiet in the defeat to Spurs and failed to record an attempt at goal. But the Norwegian has scored in each of his three home matches since the restart, totaling five goals and averaging 9.7 points per game. Those numbers bode well for Aston Villa's visit to the Etihad on Sunday. Arsenal, meanwhile, have failed to keep a clean sheet in any of their three home matches against Big Six opposition this season, conceding 1.7 goals per game on average.